Well, would you look at that? Hey you guys, it's Lewis again from Aspiring Gent. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to do full alterations on a pair of pants that I'm going to be fitting to myself with just a home sewing machine like this. I got this a gift a while ago, haven't opened it or used it, but I figured, hey, maybe some people watching this, this is all they have access to, so let's see if I can actually do some dress pant alterations on a little machine like this. So let's get started. I'm gonna try the pants on and we're going to see what needs done. So what are we going to be doing on these pants? Well, let's lay it out for you. One, gonna be putting on a cuff on the pants, going to be tapering the leg, taking in the crotch, which is something new that I haven't shown you yet, as well as letting out the waist because Lord knows I need some more belly room. But now let's get right over to the marking stage. First off, like I mentioned, the waist. We're gonna have to let that out a little bit so that I have some room to move and sit down. Now we're moving down to the leg of the pant. I'm going to taper it in as we go down the leg, going to do the hem, obviously, as well as taking in a little bit of the crotch, and this is how you mark each section. So you saw everything that I'm going to be doing and how I marked it, but now we gotta get to actually setting up the machine. Again, I've never used this before, haven't even taken it out of the box, so it's gonna be a learning curve, but let's get this undone, show you what's all in it and how to set it up. So here we are on the unboxing stage. We're just gonna whip this bad boy out and see what is all here. Got the instructions. Got the machine. It's actually a neat little, neat little guy right there. It already comes threaded. Ooh, okay, so it's got the bobbin on the back. Um, I don't know how any of this works. Let me do some reading. I'll be right back and we'll finish the description of what this even is. Alrighty, we are back. All I had to do was throw in four AA batteries. Uh, this is the wheel that's going to move up and down the needle. This guy right here is going to flip the foot up and down. In here, you have your bobbin casing. This is where the upper thread goes. This controls the speed. And to make it move, you literally hit this button. Let me actually show you from down here. So literally, all that you have to do, lift up the foot, you're gonna put your fabric in, down the foot, push this button, and then push it to stop. And there's no pedal, nothing. I mean, this is as portable as it gets, but might be a cool little machine. My only problem with this machine is I think it might be too light of duty to go through the layers of the pants that I needed to, but we're gonna do it anyway. Push this puppy to its max. Let's go. everything that we've taken off. For the waist to let out, we just took off this back belt loop and we opened up all of these tacks. And for the crotch, we just took down both inseams down to the knee and that opened it wide up. So we're gonna take it over to the pressing machine, AKA the iron, and get all the seams flattened. And now for marking these, I'm going to take these out just for a starter, an inch. And I'm only going to take it down from the waistband, probably about three inches. So now for taking in the crotch, we're going to measure in how much we got pinned. And that's going to be about three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna double that and we're going to take it in about an inch and a half in the crotch. The way you mark that is you take it from Lay it on the inseam, the back panel. You're gonna mark inch and a half, taper it down at an angle like that. Now for the tapering of the pants, we want a 14 and a half inch bottom. 
So currently they are at, whoo, we need to be at seven and a quarter. So we are going to be taking in almost an inch and a half on each side. So that means this side, we're gonna be taking in three quarters. On the other side, we're gonna take three quarters in. We're probably going to start up in like the hip area and go all the way down the leg. So if we're starting off the sewing, we are going to do the long tapered edge and just kind of see how that works. So hopefully this machine can, can keep up with this job. So that wasn't my straightest seam ever, but nevertheless, it did go all the way down and it didn't have any issues. So now we're going to do the same thing on the inseam and taking in the crotch. So going to adjust a few things as far as how I hold it, because there's no pedal. You have to control it with this on and off button over here. So I'm going to just play around with how I hold it and kind of just keeping it straight. Now, as far as tapering the legs go, the machine did pretty well. There was a lot of times where it was frustrating that I couldn't keep the seam straight because there was no control of the pedal, and as well as uh, the occasional unthreading just because, again, it was hard to get the tension right. But for a last-ditch effort, it's not that bad. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to press open these seams so that we can start working on the hem of the pants. Now we have both legs marked where we want the end of the hem to be. We're just gonna measure up and mark for a cuff. So we have everything marked and instead of pinking them, like shown here, we're going to take some straight edge scissors and we're going to cut a straight edge, fold it like this so that it's a clean edge and then we'll finish the hem. That way, because again, since we're doing everything as minimal as possible tool wise, uh, a lot of people probably just have straight scissors that they can cut this and I'm gonna show you how I roll it up so it doesn't fray. So now what we're going to do is just press all of this over so that you get a nice clean edge no fraying. Here is the pant leg. Some things that I did was just add some pins so I don't have to fuss with that. Um, and I just turned it up to that first line that you see. So turn it inside out, turn it up to the first line, and we're just going to top stitch right on the edge of this. So after you are done, this is what the outside will look like. There is a very blatantly obvious top stitch, but the reason why we're doing a cuff is because once you turn this up to this next hem, boom, absolutely no noticing of the top stitch. And then the last thing we're going to do is we can either hand tack this down so the cuff stays up, or we can just stitch in the ditch right up this, and that'll also keep it up on both sides. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, why is he basting up and down this seam here? That is because one, I do not have the proper pressing equipment because I'm trying to go as minimal as possible. So these seams aren't as pressed open as I would like them to be, as well as there's so much being tapered in that this assures that while I'm top stitching the hem, none of this gets folded in and gets bunched up because then you'll have a very thick cuff. Well, these basting stitchings on really just ensure that everything lays where it should. So, so far, so good. This little guy has been trucking like a champ through pretty much everything I've, not, I've needed to do. A few things here and there where it became unthreaded, but let's be honest, all machines become unthreaded at some point. Now we're gonna be letting out the waistband. This is what I'm most worried about, just with the thickness of all this material in here, but you guys are gonna be finding out as I do. Let's see how the little guy works. So here we are. What I'm going to try and do is just use the on off button as much as I can to kind of give it a break instead of going straight through everything. Also in the waistband, you wanna make sure that all of these layers, I'll show you when I'm done, but all the layers line up so that the seams are straight. Uh, so we're gonna to have to take this real slow.
well, would you look at that. Now this was the section I was talking about where you want the seams to match. This is the waistband where it connects to the pants and you want that to be as close as possible. Now we got the waistband tacked down and this is the finished product of the waist, leg, and bottom of these pants. I am not upset with how it turned out, but let me know what you guys think about this fit and how the machine held up. I can't believe I did all of that on this little thing. I mean, look at, like, it's like the size of my head and I was able to custom fit these pants. Now, obviously, like you saw in the fit video, I'm probably going to be doing some other modifications on my real machines. Not that this one's not real, but my bigger machines just to get it right where I want it. But for what it did, I'm not going to complain. This was a really cool challenge to try and get this done. Hopefully that you guys um, also learn something from it. Now, if you're in a situation where you're like, I want to do alterations for myself, I can't afford a machine. I mean, this guy comes in around 20 to 40 bucks and there's other versions of it that you could probably even look into. So now you have really no excuse not to be able to do your own alterations. If money is even tighter than $20 is it going to allow you, I will send this to one person to be able to have the ability to start sewing, whether it's shirts, whether it's uh, trousers, definitely going to be a lightweight thing. No denim, no chinos, probably no suit jackets, but Hey, it might get you, it might help you get started on the road to alteration. If you'd like to see anything else or see any of the things that I had explained in the video, gone into more depth, just let me know in the comments below. Send me a message on all my other social media accounts. I'll also link those in the bottom. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world. And I'll see you next time.